Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey, everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. And let me tell you what, folks, this this uh, green we're seeing today is starting to get serious. We're now at $233 billion in this market. Bitcoin's up 7.26%. But more importantly, what I want you to see here, this right here, this is how you start seeing people pouring into this space. This is how real FOMO happens. I want you to see some of these numbers. Bitcoin Cash up 24.79%. Look at this. Bitcoin SV up 53%, folks. And you keep going down this list. Dash up 34.53%. Ethereum Classic 23.41%. Folks, this is what it looks like when you start to hit a bull run. These are the kind of numbers that you see. And we haven't seen this in quite a while. But more important, this is the kind of stuff that gets the buzz going. It gets the people to start talking and FOMOing in. And this is the type of stuff that really makes things take off. I'm starting to see some of these numbers and I'm starting to, my eyes are starting to pop out of my head. And that's what will happen for the world population when they start to see these things go off. So, very exciting things going on, folks. You keep your eyes on all this. Okay, let's get into it. First thing, um, and I touched on it in the prior video, I am convinced that at Ripple, because of the, the people that have left Ripple, uh, and, and I wasn't aware of all of these, but Leonidas has laid it out here. Execs that left Ripple 2019 to 2020. Now, a lot of these executives folks are people that were, that were related to getting the right, dealing with the regulatory part of things. And a lot of these people have quietly just gone on to do their own thing. Now, I believe that these got that Ripple has worked out the regulatory part of this behind the scenes. That's what I, that's where I believe we are based on what we've seen. But here's the execs that have left: Dillip Rao, Evan Schwartz, Corey Johnson, Dan Morgan, Ryan Zagun, Ross D'Arcy, Wellington Scully, and Catherine Coley that I know of. Now it seems Kahina Van Dyke is also not with Ripple. Now if you look here, she was the SV of business and corporate development. Now, I'm not saying that all of these people left for the same reason, but I'm really talking about like Ryan Zagone and this Dan Morgan. These were regulatory guys. And out of nowhere, I, I just feel, and, and uh, Dillip Rao was extreme. He was a, I think he was a business development guy. Um, and then Ka uh, Kahina Van Dyke's business development but I'm really beginning to think that a lot of the regulatory tracks have been laid and the, some of the, the business development has been completed in the, in the focuses where these guys were. That's what, th this is getting really interesting to me that when I see these. Uh, because it, now, it, if you saw a lot of people leaving Ripple and you didn't see Ripple doing massive amounts of hiring, now that'd be, that would give me the opposite type feeling I'd be thinking being nervous then but that's not what this is it's like some of these guys have had it's like mission accomplished for some of these guys that's the vibe that I'm getting okay X-Men XRP at XRP 33 sent me this securitize opens IRAs to digital securities investors with partnership and um, it says um, digital asset ins issuer Securitas has facilitated what it says is the first direct IRA investment in security token offerings. A customer alternative um, investments get gateway Alto IRA purchased an initial investment in security tokens representing city block capitals 20 million 
dollar venture fund with tokens issued by Securitize. The arrangement is set to open new opportunities for retirement account investors seeking exposure to digital securities and alternative investment, said Securitize CEO Carlos Domingo. That's pretty interesting right there. I, I believe that I believe that that this entire market has four phases. I don't know if I've ever told you all this. I think Bitcoin is phase one. I think the big the big boys, the money people, I think that they are seeing Bitcoin as phase one, getting money into these markets and they're all going to make a ton of money. I believe phase two is going to be digital assets like XRP and the smart contract platforms like Ethereum, Cardano, and those type of things. I believe phase three is going to be uh, the transition of the traditional financial, and, and some of this is going to happen together. I'm just saying these are, I think these are the four core things that are going to be huge. Um, uh, uh, the third being the retirement funds, like what you're looking at here. Retire, and, and by the way, I've got a, a link. If you want to open an IRA, um, I've got a link in the description of all my videos for I Trust Capital where you can get one month free and you, you're able to roll a 401k or just go create an IRA which can invest you directly into XRP or Bitcoin and several others. Um, and that's there's a deal in and I've, it's a coupon code um, in the description of my videos where you can go and open an IRA with I Trust Capital. That's where I have one and I'm invested in XRP. Tax-free growth, folks. Tax-free growth. I have one of those accounts with iTrust Capital. But anyway, and then the fourth thing that I think is going so so um, retirement accounts, which is a huge thing, and then traditional brokers selling digital assets. All of that's going to be the third thing that's huge. And then let me see. I'm losing my train of thought here. The fourth, uh, the fourth, the fourth is tokenization of assets, which is what Securitize does. Those four things are the huge things that you're going to see happen, in my opinion. All right. Michelle Vandenberg really went to work today and sent me a ton of good stuff, and I'm going to show it to you now. Jaw drop. Federal Reserve officials are considering lending cash directly to hedge funds. This is how bad things are, folks, and this is how we're, why I think we're about to have a major global financial reset because these guys – they know it's the end of the Ponzi scheme. Federal Reserve officials are considering lending cash directly to hedge funds through clearing houses to ease stress in the repo market. But that could be a tough sell for poly policymakers. You better believe it. Then there's this. This was a tweet from this guy. This is where we are. Peak central bank insanity. Why, you might wonder. Because this is the only way to keep the Ponzified financial markets from collapsing. This underlines the fact that the global economic crisis started in six, the 16th September 2019. Totally agree with what he's saying there. Um, then there's this. BlackRock CEO says the climate crisis is about to trigger a fundamental reshaping of finance. Climate change has become a defining factor in companies' long-term prospects. BlackRock's assets under management total almost seven trillion in Q3 2019. Now, what do I think of when I look at this? I think that this is the specific reason that Bitcoin is only going to be a phase one, um, short to midterm part of all of this, because or or the mining um, will be once the mining is done, it won't be an issue, but. Um, the, the fact that mining wastes so much energy is the reason I believe uh, climate change is going to be a Bitcoin killer. And I don't see Bitcoin as the thing other than the short term, midterm, OK, as far as uh, growing. But it's just one of the many reasons. Now, they're either going to make Bitcoin a store of value or it's going to be nothing. I've said that before. I'll say it again. Um, OK. Bank XRP had this, um, regulated derivatives will legitimize crypto, says CFTC chairman. Now, um, here's the article. He says, by allowing cryptocurrencies to come into the world of the CFTC, investors can better access trusted and regulated financial products, improving overall confidence in the asset class 
according to Tor Tarver. It's helping to legitimize digital assets, in my view, and add liquidity to these markets. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but they're, the point is they are legitimizing the markets. Now, here's something else that's going to legitimize the markets. <laughs> also from Bank XRP, this 2020, Stefan Linder's vision for Signum, it's the, it, it is the world first digital asset bank. This is out of Switzerland, folks. Big deal. You're going to start to see digital asset banks pop up all over the world. It's going to put normal banks in a situation where they have to either, either get on board or die. That's the fact, Jack. Okay. Um, moving along. Reuters. U.S., this is interesting, U.S., Japan, EU to meet on China ahead of Wednesday trade deal signing. So these guys are going to all get together. It makes you wonder if they're all on the same page, folks. We know, here's what we do know. We know that Ripple has met with the U.S. We know that Ripple has met with the Treasury Secretary of the United States. We know that Brad Garlinghouse has. And we know that they were on the financial, the federal, whatever they call it, the payments task force um, as a proposal, I guess, more or less, to be a part of the, the new settlement system. We know that Ripple is owned, 10.5% uh, of it is owned by SBI Holdings out of Japan. We know that Japan, we know that uh, the CEO of SBI Holdings is on the board at Ripple. We know that the EU is run by Christine Lagarde now, okay? We know Christine Lagarde has said that it's not Bitcoin, it's not Ethereum, and she has talked about Ripple on several occasions. We know that Trump has is working on a deal that they're going to sign with China. We know that China, the People's Bank of China, has met in Ripple's offices because Ripple tweeted it out back in maybe 2017, 18. I showed it the other day. We've been watching, we know that Ripple is working with over 50 central banks across the world, folks. They've said such. We've seen them in the rooms with all these central banks. We know that there's a, they have said over and over they're trying to level the playing field. And there's going to be a global financial reset. And I'm just telling you, everything inside of me says that Ripple is somewhere involved in all of it. None of this is by coincidence. Okay, now. I wanted to go and show you something. I can't get this guy out of my head. Remember, um, and this is real XRP boy at boy underscore XRP. He tweeted this out. This is a clip that was from, um, I think it was from XRP Darren yesterday. This guy in this clip, literally, he's talking about, um, he's talking about Bitcoin and he, at one point, he start. He says, "What's important is the protocols." And this is the same guy that was on stage at the SEC. I'll show you that in a second. But at, in this video, um, a little ways into this video, he says, "What's important is." He's talking about the rip, the Ripple protocol. But he almost said he starts to say XRP. He literally gets XR like that, and then he goes back to Ripple as if he wants to get away from it, talking about XRP. Well, this is the guy. Glenn Hutchins is his name. And he's this guy. Now, somebody else may have done a deeper, deeper research on this. I don't, I haven't ever done any on the guy. And so I, I, I just wanted to look into the guy. So I wanted to show you what I found. So this guy is the one here that was taught more or less taking the SEC chairman to school. I'm sure these guys are all friends, but more or less, he describes Ripple and the Interledger protocol and XRP but he doesn't say the words. So I wanted to go and find out a little bit about this guy so I could tell you guys. So his name is Glenn Hutchins. He's an American businessman and investor. He's a private equity investor focused on the technology sector, sector and founder of Silver Lake uh, Partners, which is a $39 billion private equity firm. He went to Harvard. Um, he's got a law, looks like a, a, a law degree and an MBA from Harvard Law. Um, and then you go on, he says, he left the firm, uh, he was somewhere he left in, in 92, and joined the Bill Clinton presidential transition team as a senior advisor focusing on economic policy. And then it shows some other things he does. He's, he's invested in um, 
different things. And he's on, he's on, he sits on the board of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. But up here, I, I, what, what jumped out at me, he was on, he was a senior advisor focusing on economic policy with the Clinton administration. Well, what that immediately made me think of is that Ripple has on their board this guy, Gene Sperling. Look what he did. He served as the National Economic Council Director and National Economic Advisor under President Clinton. So you think Gene Sperling knows this Glenn Hutchins guy? Well, so I was like, well, surely this guy's, I mean, all he's talking about, he's dancing all around Ripple and XRP. So then, so I just typed his name and started looking around on this Glenn Hutchins guy. And this pops up. This is from, um, this is from xrpchat.com. And this is from January 25th, 2018. Fox Business in talk about, with, about, uh, Glenn Hutchins. And he said, he he's talking in here about Bitcoin and how he, he more or less, he said Bitcoin become, could easily become the Betamax of digital assets. But just like, you know, for those of you that don't know what that is, Betamax, uh, we used to back in the eighties, the VHS was how we watched movies. We would go to Blockbuster Video, rent a video, and then you'd come home and you'd put it in your VHS. It was a big tape. I know you young people are like, oh, you're, y'all are old. But anyway, that's how people watched videos. They went to Blockbuster on a Friday night and rented videos, and then they would turn them back in on the next, you know, at the end of the weekend. Well, he's comparing Bitcoin to the Betamax. Betamax was the competitor to VHS, okay? And Betamax, a lot of people say Betamax was actually, um, uh, as I recall, a better product in it, but it, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. But he's, he's referring to Bitcoin as being a, possibly the Betamax. There's no doubt it's going to be the Betamax. But in this video, he mentions Ripple. This guy can't get enough about talking about Ripple. He talks about, he knows all about it. And, and so, so I, I kept looking around and finally I found this. This is from, this is from CNBC, January 23rd, 2019. Bitcoin will go to zero. Davos talks up, uh, talks up the future of blockchain. Well, guess who was at Davos? Brad Garlinghouse was at Davos. Well, look who was on stage with Brad Garlinghouse. Right there on this left side is Glenn Hutchins. This guy knows Brad Garlinghouse because he literally was sit, sitting there in the video, in this video, which you can go and watch and he's talking to him. I'm convinced that this Glenn Hutchins knows what the deal is. He knows what's about to happen. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that Glenn Hutchins, who was sitting right in between the SEC chairman, <laughs> And, and I can't remember the other guy also knows Brad Garlinghouse and was in Davos on the stage with Brad Garlinghouse. Thank you for listening.